In this video, I want to talk about a fairly amazing consequence of the fact that you cannot write this function, that you cannot write the function halt that returns true if and only if the function f halts on input x. So it does not produce an infinite loop on input x. That's, of course, a result that's due to Alan Turing. And the consequence is this. There are true statements about the world that cannot be proven. Now, this result, a version of this result, I should say, that's actually stronger, was proven by Kurt Gödel, the Austrian mathematician, earlier than Alan Turing got his result. What we'll do instead is we'll say, OK, we did this. And we did this using the conceptual framework of Python. And again, using the conceptual framework of Python, will derive this result. Uh, now, Kurt Gödel did not have the benefit of having Python already or having programming already. So he basically invented programming, except something that's more convoluted than Python, in order to prove this result. So OK, so here is our strategy for deriving this. We'll say, OK, we've already proven previously that this function is impossible. And I'll say, OK, but let's assume that there are, this is false. Let's assume that any statement that is true can also be proven. And then what we'll do is we'll say, OK, if we assume that any statement can be proven, we can actually write halt. But we cannot write halt. So that means that there are statements that cannot be proven. That's our strategy. Now, we need to have another kind of thing that we should take to be reasonable, and that's this. We should say that we should be able to write a function that's going to be called something like check proof, that's going to take you know, a string s and a string p, and it's going to be re returned true if and only if s is a proof that p. So you know, s is going to be some kind of string, some kind of English English sentence or a bunch of sentences. P is also going to be an English sentence. And this is going to return true if and only if S contains a proof that P. So you could, should just trust me that you know this is a reasonable kind of thing to hope for. You know, you can do this. It's obviously not easy, but you can do this. So what you would do is you would you know, restrict the format in which you can write the proofs, of course, and you would restrict the format in which you can have propositions. And you know, checking that a proof is correct is a lot of easier than coming up with a proof. So you can kind of believe that, yes, if you restrict the format in which, you know, in which S can be written, you restrict the format in which P can be written, then you know, you can write this function. It's not easy, but it's possible. So, OK, so let's assume that this is true. And now let's proceed with the proof. So here's what we'll say. We'll say, OK, assume that any true statement can be proven. So that's the first thing that we do. And the strategy, again, is we'll assume that. And using this fact, we'll say, well, if this is true, then we can actually write halt. So how are we going to write halt? Well, here's the outline. So we'll just start doing that. So we'll say, here's our halt. And what we'll do is we'll just try all the proofs that f holds on x and all the proofs that f does not hold on x. And if any true statement can be proven, eventually we'll either find the proof that f holds on x or we'll find the proof that f does not hold on x. So that's what we'll do. So we'll say, OK, so let's just try all the strings in the English language. So for all strings s over the Latin alphabet we'll just say okay so 
is S a proof that F holds on X, or is S a proof that F does not hold on X, or is S something else entirely, like, you know, the text of Hamlet, or the text of Twilight, or whatever it is, maybe just gibberish. So we'll say, if check proof S F holds on X, Well, if S is a proof that F holds on X, well, that means we must return true. So we'll just return true. And if check proof S F doesn't hold on X, well, return false. Otherwise, just keep going. And that's our hope, which is trotting. So what is it going to do? It's going to go over all the possible strings over the Latin alphabet. So some of it will not even be English. Some of it will be, you know, poems and, you know, Hamlet and novels and War and Peace and stuff like that and Twilight. But some of it will be proofs. Most of the proofs are going to be incorrect. But some of the proofs might be correct, and some of them are going to be attempted proofs that F holds on X. Some of them will be attempted proofs that F does not hold on X. So, if it's true that any statement that is true can be proven, then eventually you'll find either a proof that F holds on X, or a proof that F doesn't hold on X, because one of those things has got to be true. So that means that by assuming that any true statement can be proven, we said, okay, well, then this strategy is going to work for writing the function hold. That does rely on us being able to write this check proof thing, but like we said, it's kind of plausible to say that that can be done. And that's it, because we said, well, we already proved that you can't actually write hold, and the only assumption that we made was this. And that means that this assumption is false, because making this assumption leads to deriving a function that doesn't exist.